The upgrade McLaren introduced on Lando Norris's car for the Singapore Grand Prix might not have looked like much to the naked eye, but the team characterises it as its biggest of the season. What technical director James Key describes as the first step towards a new concept also features some counterintuitive designs. He refers to lots of surfaces and things that don't look logical when you just think about the real basics of ground effect, and reveals that parts we can't see are some of the most influential in the upgrade. So with McLaren re-establishing itself in fourth place in the Constructors' Championship, thanks to Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo finishing fourth and fifth in Singapore, what does this tell us about the effectiveness of the upgrade? And even more importantly, what can we learn about McLaren's development direction for 2023? Let's take a closer look at the upgrade to the McLaren MCL36. This ran only on Norris's car because limited parts were ready, and as per the usual policy, the package was given to the lead driver, but teammate Ricardo is due to get it at the Japanese Grand Prix. The most visually obvious part of the upgrade package is actually one of the less significant. This is the change of shape to the side pod cooling inlet, which switched to a flatter, reshaped design. This will be either to improve the airflow to the radiators or the airflow spillage characteristics, possibly a blend of the two. As the race's resident former F1 technical director, Gary Anderson, spotted, this was actually a modification to existing side pods rather than newly built ones, with the old inlet duct's outer corner cut away and a new one grafted into place. To spot the key changes, you have to look a little lower. McLaren also introduced a new floor body with new geometry for the inlets and the all-important underfloor venturi tunnels that generate the ground effect downforce. Now, the underfloor detail is likely to be the most interesting and important part, but we've yet to see what's likely to be a complex interaction of airflows underneath. While the basic principle of ground effect venturi tunnels are well known, to maximise the effect and ensure you minimise porpoising problems is all about the fine detail but we can see the changes made to the front fences. These are the four vanes permitted at the front of the floor on either side of the car. There are big changes to the outer and inner fences, with the outer one contoured more progressively and the angle of the inner one adjusted. These modifications will change the mass flow that's pulled into the underfloor. And this area of the car is very sensitive. As teams have become more familiar with the cars designed to the biggest set of chassis and aerodynamic rule changes in F1 history, these fences have become an area of focus because they are critical in conditioning the airflow to the underfloor. They can also play a role in achieving better control of the aero centre of pressure, which has a significant impact on the dynamics of the car. This is particularly relevant when it comes to overcoming the fact this generation of cars struggle to generate front-end downforce at lower speeds, a problem compounded by the understeer balance of the new, low-profile Pirelli tyres on 18-inch wheels. To work with the fence changes, McLaren has also modified the detail of the edge of its floor. The previous floor edge concept was all about scavenging airflow from the front corner of the floor. This means that the diffuser doesn't have quite as much work to do to generate the low pressure under the main floor area. The philosophy of the front corner of the upgraded side pod is similar, but reuses the airflow to seal the rear section of the floor. That airflow is directed through the slot gap between the floor and the small outer wing section. This was an area that McLaren looked at very closely using Flovis paint. The overall shape of the side pod has also been modified, with changes to the way the airflow is fed to the coke bottle area at the rear of the car, both via downwash from the top surface and around the sides. As for these unusual shapes that Key references, chances are we would need a closer look at the underfloor to reveal all of those. But the team has confirmed that it has made some under-the-skin mechanical changes in order to make the space it needs to exploit these new aerodynamic ideas. That just adds to the hidden depths of these changes. What's important to remember is that all of these areas are interconnected and work together to make up the overall aerodynamic concept McLaren is aiming to pursue. The expectation is it will yield more performance, better characteristics and improved long-term development potential. Overall, the package worked well. 
Speaking after Norris qualified sixth, Key confirmed the package was performing as expected. But he did also say McLaren needs to run it at more orthodox tracks than Marina Bay to fully understand it, suggesting that this weekend's Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka will offer a more representative test venue. But while Singapore was a promising start, this upgrade is about a far bigger and more long-term picture than performance over the closing stages of 2022. Speaking after finishing fourth in Singapore, Norris stressed that this was more than just an upgrade to add lap time through downforce gains. In fact, he suggested the changes didn't make the car any quicker, but that it delivered its performance in a slightly different way. This reflects the fact this is a shift in concept. While it hasn't completely changed the car, the hope is that this will lead to improved performance and open up more design avenues. Since launching its 2022 car in February, McLaren has made significant changes. After losing time early in the season, troubleshooting a front brake cooling problem, McLaren introduced a major upgrade at May's Spanish Grand Prix. This included a significant change in side pod design, moving to a Red Bull style downwash concept. This was built on with another major package at July's French Grand Prix that included modified side pods, a new underfloor and rear brake ducts. Key described the Singapore upgrade as a first step towards a new concept, which will be the one the 2023 McLaren is designed around. And that will be all about the way the underfloor works and achieving greater control of the airflow to improve consistency and performance of the car through a wide range of corners. McLaren started the new technical regulations introduced for this season behind the curve, but has made steady progress with a development path designed to roll into next year. That's because the rules stay the same, save for tweaks such as the raising of the floor edge height by 15mm to combat bouncing and porpoising concerns. Key admitted that we would have done a few things differently knowing what we know now as far as the initial version of the MCL 36 is concerned. And while that is likely true for all teams, McLaren has now made some fundamental changes as it prepares for 2023. It remains to be seen if this new concept yields the gains McLaren hopes for as it battles to close the gap on F1's big three, but it's all part of the team's hope to be in a strong position to join the league group in 2024, by which time major infrastructure projects such as the new wind tunnel, which the team started work on in 2019 and that will be fully operational and contributing to car development from the middle of next year, will have had the chance to make a big impact. In the short term, McLaren has at least managed to kickstart its season. Before Monza, it had fallen 24 points behind Alpine in the battle for fourth in the Constructors' Championship, but it has turned that into a four-point advantage over the last two races. This has been assisted by Alpine's struggles, with the French team failing to score in either Italy or Singapore. McLaren's inconsistency in terms of results has hurt it in this battle, taking 18 points finishes compared to Alpine's 23, with Daniel Ricciardo's struggles playing a part in that shortfall. But with Alpine introducing its own upgrade to the floor in Singapore, one that allowed Fernando Alonso to run six before retiring with a failure in the power unit, McLaren expects the battle for fourth to rage to the end of the season. Both teams have aspirations of emerging as race-winning and title-challenging forces in the coming years, which is what makes the success of McLaren's new concept so important. If it works as hoped, it should produce some extra downforce this year as the team better understands how to make the most of the car. And that will be an early indication that McLaren is going in the right direction. With McLaren still battling back from its slump of the last decade, the effectiveness of this new concept will be a stern test of its true potential to re-emerge as a powerful force in F1.